As we've already seen, this production of Così Fan Tutte features a number of gifted performers Mozart perhaps might not have imagined, but I have to believe he would have loved their contribution. I'm joined now by four members of our amazing non-singing ensemble who come straight from the real Coney Island. Snake charmer Zoe Ziegfeld, fire artist Save Sovereign, and sword so <coughs> swallowers. <laughs> Betty Bloomers and Ray Valens. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Zoe, let's start with you. So Met audiences have grown accustomed to all kinds of beasts on this stage, from horses and donkeys and dogs. But this really is a first. Tell us about your stage partner here. Um, this is Rocky Balboa. She's a nine-foot boa constrictor. Wait, you're... Rocky Balboa is she? She. Love it. OK. Yes, and you're welcome to pet her. She's very oh, friendly. Oh, yes. She is. What is it? How did you get into the world of snake charming? Um, I... A, a confluence of things. I got my first pet snake when I was eight, thanks mom and dad, and then I've been dancing for about as long, and um, Coney Island needed a new snake charmer, and I didn't realize that was a job, but... I love it. It's it amazing. It's amazing. Thank you. Sage, <laughs> again, oh. you're making me nervous as a singer here. I've never met a fire artist. What oh, drew well. you to, to this incredible thing? And I'm interested in the danger factor. Oh, so the danger factor is very real, but uh, all fire artists take a lot of safety precautions. A lot goes into prepping for uh, fire performance. We have our fire safety techs that are here. Um, but in terms of the artistic aspect of fire, um, it's one of the most expressive elements to me to work with. And there's a danger factor, of course, but it's, it's exquisite and it's beautiful and it, it represents creativity and creation and destruction. And it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a powerful and expressive it's operatic. medium. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we have a very new kind of diva on this stage with you guys here today. I, uh -huh. I love it. And yeah. so Betty and Ray are sword swallowing brother and sister, I understand, too. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the first time that you gave this a go. I'm Super curious about that whole uh, uh, introducing the sword to the throat. Well, Betty taught me how to do it a few years ago. Uh, and I mean, been doing things that people have told us not to for as long as I can remember. <laughs> this, was, this was just the latest uh, in a career choice. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and you're doing it in front of a big public today. Right. Yeah. How did, how did you become a sword swallower? Um, against the advice of my parents, hi, mom and dad. Uh, so. I became a sword swallower as soon as I found out that it was something that existed because when I grew up I wasn't aware of it at all. I was never exposed to it and then as soon as I was, I was just obsessed. I wanted to know more and I wanted to know if it was something that I could do or what that process was like and um, apparently it is. <laughs> and you guys are doing this here on the stage with the Metropolitan Opera, which yeah. I know is a big, big thrill for you to debut here. Mm. We're so happy to have you all, really. Thank you for bringing so much color and excitement and divadum. Absolutely. <laughs> and a little bit of reptilian fabulousness to this. Thank you, guys.